Yeah, no, you read the title right. This is actually going to be a video about a Fallout 3 mod. Obviously on this channel, I post a lot of content pertaining to Fallout 4, even some other games like Skyrim and New Vegas on occasion, but I don't think I've ever made a video about Fallout 3. Well, a few days ago, a new mod was released for Fallout 3 that's actually a large new addition to the game, and it's honestly kind of shocking that it took this many years, almost 10 years, the anniversary of Fallout 3 is coming later this November, for a mod like this to actually get released. Before we actually jump into the nitty gritty of what this mod is, what it adds in, and all that, I actually do want to ask you guys a question. Do you want to see some kind of series actually showing you how good you can make some of these older games like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and even Skyrim and maybe Fallout 4? to look in 2018. Like the video would be, how good can you get Fallout 3 to look in 2018? I'm very willing to make a video about that. So if you guys are interested, you can leave a comment down below saying, hey, yeah, make that video. And obviously if you wanna see a video like that, you can subscribe to this channel because it very realistically could be coming in the next couple of days. Either way, so what we're gonna be looking at today is simply uncut. This is a mod that came out on the 29th of April, 2018. So yes, very far after the release of Fallout 3. It was actually pretty nostalgic jumping back into that game after not playing it for so many years. And again, in the background, I'm actually not really using any mods. It's just kind of the vanilla game and the Simply Uncut mod. What it's going to do is restore a ton of cut content that was previously present in some of the game's files. Things that were intended at one point to actually appear in the game, but never got added in for whatever reason or were cut at the last minute, whether that be in pre-production or right before the game's release. This is a very common type of mod. There's actually another one, the Cutting Room Floor for Skyrim. That's extremely popular adding in a ton of new content and this is of a similar vein to something like that. What's going to add in is a plethora of new NPCs, a bunch of new pieces of equipment ranging from different armors and weapons, and actually a new schematic that you can create. I'm going to only briefly go over and skim over some of the things added. If you actually want to see the full details of everything added, there is going to be the mod page down below. This of course is a mod for Fallout 3, so you have to have Fallout 3 on PC to actually use this, as well as all of the DLC, which I imagine, even if you don't own it, you can get it for pretty cheap right now. And also, since there's some kind of rumor that you can't use Fallout 3 on Windows 10, yes you can. You need to download like one patch first, but you totally can still use it on Windows 10, so don't fret if that's your system. So one of the coolest and my favorite parts about this mod is actually the new NPCs it adds in. It's going to restore NPCs all over the Commonwealth, ranging from just some miscellaneous Brotherhood of Steel that were kind of referenced, maybe some of the other members of the Brotherhood talked about them, yet they were mysteriously missing from the game, that they don't actually really have much dialogue, to some other NPCs with a bit more depth and a bit more dialogue behind them. Again, a lot of the NPCs added in by this are actually people that you do hear about, maybe other NPCs talked about them. One added back in is actually the other person at Galaxy News Radio, Margaret, and if Three Dog does die, she actually replaces him, at least voice-wise, but you never actually get to meet that NPC after installing this mod. You could if you wanted to. All in all, this mod's going to add in over 20 new NPCs to different locations, even through some of the DLC locations, and then some of them with their original purpose restored. As I did mention before, it also adds in a bunch of new weapons and armor types. One of the either cool or really frustrating parts about this is the mod author doesn't actually tell you where any of these new armors or weapons are. He does tell you where the NPCs are, but with the weapons and armors, I think he really just wanted you to play through the game and find them naturally. A lot of these, again, are just different pieces of cut content. Some of them way more unique, some of them just have different stats, but are largely the same as some of the vanilla pieces of equipment. And actually, quite a few of these are things from Operation Anchorage's DLC that you could never actually get as a player. You could see other NPCs using them, and maybe actually pick it up through the DLC, but there's a bunch of things that you could and actually take back to the Capital Wasteland that now will appear in the Capital Wasteland through various methods. Again, I don't want to spoil too much here, but some of these you'll actually find on other NPCs, so you have to take them down. Some will just be left around, and others you'll have to loot off of other players' bodies or whatever it may be. There's really quite a wide variety here. This is another one that's going to take place both in the vanilla Fallout 3 as well as some of the DLC locations. Many of these new pieces of equipment placed around the world are unique and distinctive in some way, whether it just be a pink power armor that makes you look flashy and, well, pretty standout-ish, or a really cool shotgun that's very similar to the vanilla one, but obviously has some different stats and of course a different name. Unfortunately, as of right now, the mod doesn't add in any of the cut quests. The mod author actually said he doesn't plan on doing this going forward. But what it is going to bring to the table is a lot of the individual things that you may have heard of, read about, or had other NPCs tell you about in Fallout 3 that were seemingly missing or gone for no apparent reason. It was a really good job of actually bringing some of these aspects of the game back together again. And after installing this mod, you're going to notice different things at all parts of the wasteland. There's even a new character at your birthday party if you go through that again. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Obviously, a very 
very different video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I think every once in a while it'll be refreshing to cover a mod that comes out for one of these older games that is significant in some way. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Again, let me know in the comments down below. Do you want to see one of those videos like how good you can make X game look in this year? For today's psych fun fact, it's actually going to be a bit different than any of the normal psych fun facts I show you. This is something I recently learned in one of my psychology classes, but it's actually a website that I never knew about and it just seems like it's going to be an immensely useful tool. If you're in college or maybe even in high school and trying to figure out what to major in in college, you probably heard of the website BLS. If you haven't, that's also a very useful tool. It's the Bureau of Labor Statistics and more or less they publish salary data, job outlook data, things like that. So you could see the salary for a specific position or at least the median salary and if that job or position is going to have more opportunities in the future or less. It's something that I've used many, many times when actually looking at different jobs that I may want to pursue or different degrees I want to pursue, and I feel like it actually is quite well known. Well, another website that I recently learned about in my class is actually called Onet. This is something that many of you guys actually may have heard of, but I was just introduced into this, and more or less what it's going to do is provide all that same data from BLS that I just told you about, but in addition, it's actually going to specify what kind of tasks you would have in that job, some of the technological skills you might want behind it, what kind of knowledge you're going to need in it, different skills that like people in that job tend to have and just a bunch of other things it really goes into quite extensive detail as to what that job would entail Again, maybe this is like overly specific, but I personally found this website to be super helpful when trying to figure out what I wanted to do, even just over the past few days, because even though I'm about to wrap up my degree, I honestly have no idea what I want to do in grad school. And I definitely think I'm going to reference this website as I'm trying to figure that out. And especially for those of you in high school, one of the really useful parts is it actually tells you what level of education most people in that job have. Like for one type of psychologist, it says 48% of people have a doctoral and 47% have a master's. So you'll probably be fine with just a master's if you want to go that route. I don't know, maybe you're finding this useless and pointless, but I found this really interesting even just to read up on other jobs. Again, all this data is provided by the government and actually I think they survey people in certain industries and that's how they get the data. But yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. As always, again, I thank you guys for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you all next time. Later.